Hello friends, I'm going to show you how I got started in astrophotography. So I'll call this Astrophotography 101. And I'll show you the basics of what you need to get started. It's really quite amazing what is possible for the backyard astronomer today. Now I got started in photography over 50 years ago using a 35 millimeter camera. And we've sure come a long way since those days. A few years ago, I bought an 80 millimeter refractor telescope and I attached my DSLR camera to that telescope. So to begin with, you're going to need a way to attach your camera to the telescope. You can get online and find these T-rings or telescope adapters. And in this case, it's called the True2 Prime Focus Telescope Adapter. So I'll take off my uh, my eyepiece there and now we'll just slide the camera into the telescope. Now for two years I was quite happy with my DSLR attached to my little 80 millimeter refractor telescope. I took some really nice pictures of the moon and uh, enjoyed being out there under the night sky. You don't have to spend a lot of money to get started in this hobby. So let's stop right here for a minute. There's that little 80 millimeter telescope on the tripod. And I took a lot of pictures with that telescope before I bought the tracking mount. And I actually achieved some pretty nice results uh, taking snapshot style images through that scope. Well nowadays with the computer and DSLRs, it's revolutionized the entire backyard astronomer's uh, approach to to astrophotography. Deep sky imaging is all about gathering light. Objects like galaxies and nebula are very faint, so the idea is to take many long exposures and then combine the light you gathered. This process is called stacking. I use a program called Nebulosity to control my camera and take the exposures. Then the program will stack the exposures too. I have a tutorial on how to use this awesome program. Now we'll connect that camera to the computer and I use a program called Nebulosity to actually control that camera and take my pictures for me. So instead of me standing there uh, snapping the shutter on the camera over and over I can set the program up to uh, do it for me. So in this uh, program it, it supports the Canon DSLR and so I selected that. There it is. Now you you just set up this uh, program to do what you want to do and so I'm going to say uh, we'll set it to take one one minute exposures so that's 60 seconds and there's your uh, ISO and I normally shoot at 1600 and then you set it for the number of exposures that you want want the camera to take. And then down below here you have several uh, things that you need to do. You'll, you'll give your series a title and select the directory where you want to uh, store the pictures. And then next you need to uh, focus the uh, telescope and then you have a preview that you can do to, uh, to see if you're ready to go. So here's a project I did on the Andromeda Galaxy. And so I set the camera up in the computer and got everything focused and ready to go. And then it uh, took several exposures here. And uh, of course they're all stored. And then later on you're going to use what they call a stacking program to stack all of those exposures that you took. And then the computer will render a final image for you. And so when you first take the uh, exposures, you'll look at them and you might think, well, this is disappointing. It kind of looks like a, a just a, a blob of light on your... There, there's an example of what you see in one of those exposures. That's the Andromeda galaxy right there. But after the computer stacks those images and renders that final image, the result can be quite amazing. And this is my final uh, image that I was able to produce. 
It certainly is a great time to be an amateur backyard astronomer. So let's choose our target for this evening, and so we need to find out what's up there. It's never been easier than it is today to learn about the night sky. The computer can be a great tool for learning, just about anything you want to learn. And there's all kinds of programs uh, for astronomy for the computer. This is one called Stellarium. And at 8 o'clock at night, my sky where I am will look like this. And uh, in the southeast, there's uh, Orion. So tonight what we'll do is image the uh, Great Orion Nebula, which is located right here in Orion's sword. The second star in that sword is actually the nebula. Well, hello everybody. I just got back from the observatory. And so what I'm going to show you now is uh, my imaging session. Okay, was so we're at the observatory. It's 17 degrees, pretty chilly. And I've got nebulosity open and the telescope is pointed towards the great Orion Nebula. And now we have to focus. And so what I do is I I set the, the gain to uh, ISO 6400 here and uh, with a preview time of 10 seconds. And I, I do a preview and there goes the camera. I just heard it click so it's it's counting down here exposing 35, 40 percent, 50 percent. And what I do is uh, see what these stars look like when it comes to uh, the end of this capture here and they're still pretty big and so I turn the focus knob a little bit and then I do another preview. So here we go. Just a short 10 second exposure is enough to uh, be able to see those stars. Okay and they're smaller. So here we go. I'm going to turn a little bit more on the focus knob. Do another frame and focus. We're at 60 percent here now. 70, 80, and there it is, and now we'll, there it is, and there's the great Orion Nebula, and we're in focus. Okay, so we're getting there now. When those, when those stars look like pinpoints of light, then you know you've got the best focus that you could possibly get. And there's the Orion Le Nebula, it's looking real good. And like I said, it's 17 degrees out here, so my lips are froze. Okay, so I want to make sure this is going to work, and so what I've done here is I've set the um, program up to take um, a 10 second exposure with a gain of 1600, ISO 1600, one exposure, and we'll, and we'll just make sure that it does it. Okay, so frame of the preview, capture series right there. So we're going to capture that series, which in this case is only one picture. And there it is. It uh, when you hear that little alarm, that uh, tells me that it uh, it was successful. I tell you, like I was saying, it's uh, it's 17 degrees, and so uh, I'm glad I have this warm cabin. I've got a nice little tiny house cabin here. I can come in and get warmed up. So in a minute here, I'll take this jacket off. But uh, with it being 17 degrees, I've got the um, the computer set to take the 25 exposures, 25 one minute exposures, and so I'll go outside in about 15 minutes and just check and see how things are doing. So I thought I'd show you uh, how I actually set the the camera and program up in real, real time here uh, to image Orion. And it was a little bit of a little bit of a hassle out there. Uh, there's not much room in my little observatory there for all this equipment, but I, I I hope I've managed to do it so I can explain it in the uh, video. So okay, I'm gonna uh, just get warm here for a while, then then go back out and we'll try. Usually when it's this cold, I have a long USB cord that will reach all the way from the uh, observatory into the cabin here. And so after I get everything all focused and ready to go, I just bring the computer right inside here and, uh, and, and run it that way. I haven't been up here to uh, do
do any imaging in, in about two years. And so I've got to get back in the groove. Now this is an image that I produced a few years ago when I first got started in uh, astrophotography. And I, I, I used my 80 millimeter refractor telescope for this. And, and that's a wonderful little telescope, Explorer Scientific ED80. And uh, now that I have their uh, 140 millimeter refractor, I can't wait to see what that telescope is capable of producing. So I hope you enjoyed the video, everybody. And uh, if you're just getting started in astrophotography, maybe this will help you out a little bit to uh, see what's involved. So thanks for watching, everybody. Bye-bye.